Uh, first of all, I have an announcement to those who have uh, made their payments today for registration. You guys can get your receipts at the reception counter. So, on to the next guest. For the first talk of the day, our speaker is currently the CEO of Handicap Services and the Honorary Advisory Center of the Asian Pacific Assistive Robotics Association. To present this topic, Robotics and IR 4.0 Adoption in the Singapore Healthcare Industry, please welcome Mr. Oliver Chen. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, thank you to Marius uh, and Valeria. Thank you. Uh, I really appreciate coming here to see all of you. So just so you know, my birth certificate is going to say Indonesia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Dr. Expander asked me to make this presentation robotics and higher for the whole uh, adoption. I scratch my head a lot. Because when you talk about industry for the world, usually we can refer to the factory. So how does it apply into healthcare? So that is something which I start to feel a lot and talk a lot. And I, I challenge myself to ask whether can I use the same metrics in industry for the world and determine if healthcare can have that level of achievement. So what I did was this. I kind of titled my presentation as aging in technology. I think that's really more interesting, right? But uh, the key message is really um, the area around robotics in industry for the whole adoption. And I'll give you examples of what we do in Singapore. Uh, this is a new feature, right? I must start with this. <laughs> the civil care industry aging population, this is real. We all know, all over the world, right? all over the world, people are getting older, they're living longer. Living longer means different issues to deal with. Right? If I look at this report, uh, they came from the United Nations. Right? If you look at uh, the color zones, the blue uh, are those that are young, 0 to 19 years old. Uh, the yellow or the orange are those that are 65 and above. Look at that ratio from 1950 to 2000 and to 2050. The yellow-orange profession is increasing tremendously, which means the ratio of people getting older compared to the young is an alarming statistic that we should be very concerned about. And hence, and hence, it is important to note that spending in healthcare will increase as a result. The question is how do we handle that? How do we do that? <coughs> So I, I, I went to a recent talk in Singapore that talks about the four mega trends, right? If I look at the last 30 years from 1990 to today, right, what are the major issues around the world? Globalization, big topic, right? Everybody is traveling, going across countries. Two, urbanization. Those big countries define people moving from the rural areas to the cities, right? Digital adoption. Big time. We all want to study digital technology as so. well. And finally, China is a big topic. Now, we're not going to talk about this because it's not us. What's going to happen in the next 30 years? These are some of the predictions, right? Technology revolution is a real thing. The industry for the whole is real. Okay, how do we embrace that? Well, we want to handle the real water issue, we don't have the time. But green population is also so entitled as a trend. Singapore is catching up to Japan in terms of our technology. We are about 1.2 today. Japan is about 1.1. So it's a big worry. We are not producing enough to maintain our population. Industry for the whole. So now this is where I expect my head, right? What does it mean? So if I look at the history, right? The first mechanization uh, uh, revolution, how we move in to get into a lot more mass production. Automation and technology steps in. And now, when we look at industry for the whole, we're really looking at a cyber physical system that can automate the whole process within the country. So, where does our family in? Location is it? Smart factory, okay. What about smart healthcare? So, what does smart healthcare mean? How can we adopt smart healthcare in our daily lives? 
this was a different um, task here, for year ago, when uh, ASEAN had a meeting, and our, our prime minister stood up and said that ASEAN should benefit from industry capital. Prime minister. Uh, prime minister. The issue is this, right? How can we, as an ASEAN group, come together right, and benefit from this? We should really work together. We are going to be the fourth largest economic group in the world. Hence, if we can work together, we can achieve a lot more. I thought that was a very good message for all of us. Then look at how does it work. So I, I made mean an attempt, right? So this is my attempt to make four the health care site. Uh, there's a lot of work done in the hospitals. So I will touch the hospitals so far. Look at the health care, the community care, the self-care site, and what are the issues. So here I've highlighted three possible issues that we want to deal with. But they started mentioning problem statements. So what is the problem statement going to solve? Then we have three which I think we should think about. One is the growing need for connected health care due to the old aging population. The more we get connected, the more we know. We don't have time to search paper records to see what happened. We need to have information instantly so that we can diagnose and help those in need. The second issue is shortage of healthcare facilities and healthcare providers. Now, I know maybe in some countries we don't have that issue, but growingly, slowly, with aging population, there will be an issue here in terms of shortage. And thirdly, importantly, the stress and the burden on caregivers. Not just professional caregivers, even home caregivers, right? Our parents are getting older, our grandparents are still around. We need to care for them. And if we have to take care of everything for them, it's very, very stressful. So those, I think, are three problem statements that we should watch out for. And having said that, can we do something about this? Can industry for the do something about it? Can automation robotics come into the part? So if I look at a broader picture, I can look at a broader picture, right? I think in the next 30 years, we need to look at a close loop from home to hospital and back to home again. So this must be connected, connected such that we are able, oops, I'm sorry, we are able to allow information to flow freely and allow caregivers, physicians to use information to support the caregiving. Now, one big challenge today we see in our industry is we normally classify the elderly by age. Right? If you are below 65, 65 to 75, 75 to 80, 85 and beyond. But is that the right way to classify? So, I have a friend in Singapore, his name is I'm just saying, unfortunately, I'm just unable to come. But he's going to stand by. He's going to meet us very shortly. But he came up with this idea that perhaps we should classify our elderly in the whole category from very fit right down to severely frail. And it's based on four indicators, right? One is the actual physical health of the individual. We've seen people who are 80 years old and still go on marathon. We cannot classify the individual as person that compared to someone who's big ridden. It's a person on an ongoing basis to learn new things, to be digitally aware, to be familiar with technology, to be familiar with what's going on around the world. How is he actively participating in the community? Is he living alone at home? Or is he involved in various social activities to keep himself active? And finally, financial security. That's it. The means to continue going on. Or is he struggling to support himself? So he did a little study and then he presented a paper like this to say that if this is the group that we want to deal with, what can be done? So he came up with this concept called well-elderly. Well-elderly. Combined with well-elderly. So he's trying to look at how you can actually explore delivery habits and the environment they study in, uh, you live in and provide support to that kind of environment and namely here at the home, and enable better health care. So let's start the time, right? See this gentleman right here? And with some of his robots and gadgets. So he's a practicing physician. Um, he used to work for the Tan Tok Seng General Hospital in Singapore. Uh, he figured that there's too much protocol, too impressive. So he came out on his own. 
Wie war es zum Frieden? Ginseng Kern ist in deinem Ding. Ah, ja. Hi, Ginseng. Hallo. Ja. Yes, der gute Ohr da. So, da kommt ein bisschen auf die Gegend. Ähm, das ist doch gut. So, this is the device that you use in Singapore. Right, so for patients to say, how is this kind of home? Right, and I, I want to be monitored at the same time, he loads the device to his patients. And on a daily basis, wherever he is, he can still consult the patient without the patient traveling to the clinic or the hospital. Just say, what do you have now? Uh, I'm here in the fishing uh, place uh, with my friend, Dr. Fishing. Yeah, I did that when nothing is happening. I say I must wait for the time. When I say I'm on vacation with my wife, in Bangkok, I said, okay, no worries. We use technology to communicate. So you can imagine, right, in the case of emergency, right, the doctor would have to really travel. But you can really do a quick diagnostic to assess if really there's a need to make the trip. And you can realize that the camera is not fixed. You can turn around, you can turn the seat, you can move towards the patient. I and actually we have devices that we use that can measure the vital signs and Bluetooth into the machine and on his mobile phone you can actually read. He can actually read the statistics to help diagnose the patient. Now, what I'm showing here is not a product. This is really in practice today. From the time to champion such technology. In fact, sometimes I worry because although I'm a in computing science, he does more research than I do. <laughs> but he is one passionate individual who believes that industry for the world is again for all industries. And in healthcare, we can do the same thing. Thanks for the time. It's a puppy again in Singapore. Bye. <laughs> Enjoy the job. <laughs> yeah. So, let me show you some of the other devices you use. This is Dr. Tan, right in action. This is his clinic in the Indian village in Singapore. Right? Um, some of the devices you use. So, you can see, it's not a typical doctor's test. Right? You see a lot of monitors and, and, and devices and equipment is what he does. Right on the area. He does what's called a taxi prescription. In other words, by a face-to-face -face meeting and with all the data collected, he can actually use the issue of prescription and the document to say, go to the pharmacy, pick up this drugs. And did that happening, right? Yeah. Now he's talking about the application in Singapore, Ministry of Health. How can you do that? You don't even see a patient, you don't touch a patient. How do you know this is doing the right thing? We struggle a lot to get this through. Right? We are still in the process of language. Officially stating that e prescription is an approved process. But imagine if this can be done. We have an LA Singapore. Very difficult to move to the clinic. Go to the clinic, you wait two hours. But he might be good at it, just like this. Right, the phone can be really to run to the drug store of the pharmacist with Dr. Tan's donation by the drug store. And we save a lot of people, we save a lot of time. <coughs> Industry for the whole of right in healthcare. So, these are some of the things that we do in Singapore. Right, so you see different robots, right? So this is a different robot here. This is a, a real mechanical one. That, that do healthcare, getting the elderly to move around. These are some of the newspaper we use. This is the one where we have a collection, then we do a little coaching dance. Right? So, the issue is this, right? And the bigger problem is not just simply having a robot moving around, having fun, right? Move around, look at each other, say hello. The issue will be really, right? Social isolation. Sometimes, Sometimes it is also a function of companionship. Right? We all want to go and go. The elderly stays alone at home. Is there a way to have a robot to keep the elderly company? Talk to. If need to, dial up and to the mobile phone, but don't disturb the children too often. 
but I think there's a tendency to this can be made possible. So providing help when nobody's around, right? And more importantly, it's not making the memory loss, right? Dementia, an important issue. And dementia means that sometimes the, the person at home may forget what he or she is doing or where she is doing. So with the robot moving around, I can actually go and search for the elderly to make sure it doesn't strangle off the toilet or simply too long. Give a lot messages. Uh, so, what does it mean? The industrial, uh, industrial revolution, revolution for the whole would mean that we can have a social robot that can accompany the elderly, living along with the elderly at home to serve multiple purposes. And in Singapore, we're seeing that 8 in 10 elderly because to go home at home, not in the medical institution. So which means that I need to have an alternative care model at home to support the Singaporeans who have this preferential choice. The answer we have, and you saw what Dr. Tan has, right, is a teleport that can be set in your home and more importantly, connect the internet to remote caregivers, provide any assistance when you do. Um, this will look into, besides the interactive companionship, right, to help the elderly in their daily lives, maybe in pre-scheduled services, such as daily exercises, robots can remind the patients the time you need to get up and walk around a little bit, either in the room or move the limbs, right? Do the little robot dance, right? You do it together with the robot, right? The robot has limbs, so you can follow the robot's movements. Drug administration, reminder that the is a okay, it's a prescription for the for, for the next two months, right? What drugs, you know, green pill, yellow pill, whatever pill, right? At what time? Give alerts, right? Of course you need the elderly to operate that. And um, support the elderly in terms of awareness or movements. Right? There are probably areas where the elderly may not be safe going to. With that monitoring, right? You can say, oh, I don't know that, that place is not good. You're going to be watched. You notice how uh, flexible to monitor this. Look up, look down, turn around, right? Only for room to another room. So you can actually provide that kind of support to, to the um, family members, right? Of course, connection to the caregivers and telepresence, I mentioned that. Uh, we also talk about devices that you can capture the value signs. So we brought a couple of products so you can have a look if you want, right? From simple temperature dating, blood pressure, um, sleep readers, right? to monitor the sleep uh, patterns, and transmit all those to the tablet, the mobile phone, and have access to information to do the necessary diagnosis. And I guess most importantly is this part, initial response in the case of emergency. We're not saying that this will replace the doctor, right? But this will augment the doctor's job. In initial response, I guess in, in the doctor's way, call it a triage, right? Initial management, just to see whether you're okay or not. Right? So that can be done perhaps with the machine by right? home. So we created this, right? So this is another equation that we have. This is a little robot here. And this is life. So this robot lives with this elderly, right? And uh, it does various things to the elderly. So this elderly, of course, you know, the modern times the elderly are a little bit more uh, literate, really. Right? So she could sing songs, hug the robot, play the robot, uh, activities, and the robot talk. This is a lady who lived alone at home, and now she has got this companion. This is a pilot that we are trying, uh, hoping to get an information to work on this. Right? We name this Lisa, Lawyer Interactive Service System. Lisa is a nice name, right? What does it do? Well, what's important is you can do video conferencing, which is a very important thing. And today, we are in today's infrastructure of internet, right? services are quite available, broadband is quite available. So you can get it done. Autonomous and mobile movements. Now I'll explain this a little bit. But most of the devices uh, depend on smart sensors, either from the thumbnail or move around. But what we have actually added on is a bit more than that. The robot can actually do certain pre-standard movements. 
So we can have certain points like the living room, uh, the kitchen, the bedroom, one, the bedroom, and it's a designated location. The robot can move there by himself because it's pre pumped right? But when you get to that particular location, then the remote control takes over. So you don't have to control everything from remote. So that's all what we saw was Dr. Tan trying to control the robot from back up. So, so you can see that I got to wait for him to control and move the robot. But this machine actually will move to me first, nearby within a one meter range, and then the other person takes over. So it speeds up the process. Right? And of course, cloud intelligence, a lot of the information is from the cloud. So which means it is shared. Not by just one caregiver, not by just one position, but relevant parties authorize to access that information. Right. What is important is we want the robot to be able to see and talk. Right, video conferencing, communication, interaction. Go and find where is my grandma. Right? So the, the robot can search the house. Check and remind. Right? Remind procedures, remind drafts. Uh, check what's happening, measure the information, monitor and then soon respond. Okay. So the question is right past the industry for the whole test. Right? So now we go back to the basic, right? Industry for the what do you mean by industry for the whole? Right? What are the parameters say is industry for the whole? So I, I looked at the internet and I saw this industry for the whole framework. Right? So over here it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight different parameters. You must cover all that. So I scratch my head. Hey, must be out there. This is my jump back three years. <laughs> So how does a robot be caught in the home in this type of Does it have a smart sensor? Yes. Right, it's a lighter. It's the movement. Does it has a robot? Yes, the robot is I think more advanced than the factory to pick a drop out. Right. Does it pick data? Yes, it's connected to the cloud. So it do all the analytics necessary. Does it have a location that uh, detection? Yes. It can move to different places within the house, house within the home. That is what we do. Yes. Augmented reality. Yes. Small. Little bit small thing. Right. IoT. Yes. Does that. So in a way, if I break down and, and measure it based on the parameter, the, the statistics, the index indicators, it does look like you know, an industrial for the whole adoption. I, I, I welcome any feedback to see if there are additional parameters to be fed. But if the factories are using this set of parameters to indicate whether you are using for the whole, I'm using the same metrics to measure robots in healthcare. So I am actually adopting the framework in the shape of the whole into the healthcare environment. And I generally pass. There is a lot of what we see now 3D printing. Right. Yes. Yes. And prosthetic, yes. And you know what? That robot is 3D printed. That robot is 3D printed. I don't have to go to the mesh production to bring out the cost. It's 3D printed. Amazing, right? 3D printed technology. Now, if I don't have to 3D printed, it's probably gas. Right? Look at it, the box was study it. They move around, hard to feel. So that product is actually treated in uh, San Jose, which is a loss in this level. So in a way, I went at last. So Lisa is the model we're looking at. Lisa actually is also treated in Singapore. Right. Um, this is a project by Nian Polytechnic, uh, working together with the, uh, the Ministry of Health and some of the communities. Right. So, what the hell is it? So, we have a robot, a cloud teleport, we need a home, connected the internet to the various factory members, the cafe consultants, monitoring caregivers, the networks, and a home box behind here. Now, robots replace humans. Right. Robots um, will make us lose jobs. I, I think it's not that. A robot's augment. So that's it with this robot, actually I can augment the family members by providing additional care uh, and monitoring. I can augment the healthcare consultants because they provide information. 
initial uh, assessments, and I will even create a new category of healthcare service providers. A group of service providers that could be uh, on demand, maybe within the facility, the support, I work with the tech consultants to uh, assess the elderly, the patient, uh, in the case of emergency. Now this may not be tried before, we are looking at exploring the social social network so that if this doctor is in Bangkok, this person is replying in the swimming Trajaya, um, will there be a network of volunteer or healthcare service providers like qualified or uh, not certified qualified who can run a course and assist within 30 minutes an hour instead of waiting for the something to be waiting to over, right? Instead of being calling for the ambulance to come, and there be some form of assistance. So actually, robotic technology, if it's deployed correctly, may actually create an additional family of jobs. I guess moving forward into the smart technology, right? Aging smart technology. What we are saying is that we need to slowly increase a high degree of self-confidence and awareness of technology. How technology support us, how technology augment us in terms of human potential and capability. Different things is we take care of our uh, act, uh, activities of daily life, uh, enriching our lifestyle, and the different social and economic settings. Now we need to work together. This is a new space. I, I like uh Sanders message, right? Private industry, public researchers coming together by uh, the three party where we can do some proper research and uh, direction to help us enhance the quality of life. And let me give a little caution though. Uh, before that, uh, just a bit of what you're selling us. Apara, I didn't mention my knowledge, so Asia Pacific Assisted Robotic uh, uh, Association is an association that's been formed recently with the president of the Singapore government. And we try to do three things. Right? First of all, we try to look at how we use the world's movement in the future. We promote that, we encourage that, and we seek solutions that achieve these objectives. And more importantly, can we create a new family of jobs right? to help reskill, upskill uh, uh, jobs that are automated to new found areas. Secondly, we want to be connected to a network of technology enablers. Technology is being developed around the world, like virus and Prof. and Kandel said, we need to be internationally connected. There may be things that's created in Korea, in Japan, in France, in the US, that we may not know of. Technology is no way for us. If we are connected, we know of them, we can take advantage of them. Like what Dr. Tan did, right? Technology, he found that little machine. Right. He bought it in, he fired up enough, he's looking for a partner to, to be a distributor of technology. But of course, we need to make sure that it's market there in the first place. But the fact that he's actually piloting it, showing that it works, right, I believe there will be a market. Um, and of course, we want people who use this technology, use technology to eventually enjoy the journey. Many of us are very stressed and say automation. Right, robotization, I lose my job, I don't know what to do, it's stress. But what can we do to enjoy the whole transformation? Right. It's not easy, it's not easy. Why do I say that? I think what is happening is what I call the digital generation gap. The digital generation gap. Now let me describe three categories of people here. One, the digital immigrants. I'm a digital immigrant, I'm not a digital immigrant. Some of you be. Meaning that we used to do paper and pen roll. Right? And for some of us, maybe the first automation was the Telex machine. Right? The Telex machine. That's the new thing which we know what it is. Right? And we migrate into today with our email, mobile communication. So we are immigrants into the digital world. The second category of the digital natives, those who are born with the digital technology, they grew up playing the mobile phone, tablets, and they're very good with it. And, and today, even the elementary schools children play a lot with it. We talk, we talk about elementary schools children going to robotic classes. Right? This group category are probably okay. The young ones were there 
task we have migrated there. What I call the digital shock will be one to worry. People who never got exposed to the digital technology world, and suddenly everything is digitalized, we get scared of it. We are scared not because we are not smart, we are scared because of unknown. But we are shocked because we don't know what the robot can do. He can do it in his jobs, he worries us. But actually, if we design the whole cycle properly, technically, we should be the masters of technology. So let us not be basically shocked. Let us be able to master technology, leverage technology, to augment the technology. Well, let me end off with this slide showing Singapore. Uh, we, are all welcome, uh, we, we welcome you to come to Singapore anytime. Um, if there's anything, anything I can do, we are happy to meet you. Um, more importantly, I think the future is around collaboration. The future is how we work together and be smart together. That's all I have for you. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. Uh, I'll be around to lunch. You can see the machines, uh, the little device that we have there. We're going to talk to the robot again. We can do a live demo with Shan. I'll uh, show you. Uh, oh, I forgot to introduce Shan. Shan, uh, behind the lady who was taking the machine, she's actually the president of the Asia Pacific Institute of Working. So, we will be back. Right, thank you so much. Oh, you want to ask a question? Do you have a question? I'll forget to ask. Okay, I have a question. Sure, please. Uh, generally, in the uh, system of the future, not really the system of the regulatory kind of consideration to be to that. How is the landscape like in terms of the world uh, acceptability in terms of scan technologies and the regulatory investment that is done to ensure that this technology is done? You mentioned something about uh, one of the technologies that require regulatory yes. investment. Yes. How do you address the world as China, US, and Europe and uh, so forth? And what is your mission for this? Sure, sure. Okay, so how is the, the authorities looking at regulation? Um, there are many, many uh, thoughts about how that should be done. Um, before I answer the question, let me draw all your attention to the web paper published by the World Economic Forum. It's called the Eight Future Space of Shop. So, the World Economic Forum published a white paper, I think, about two years ago, that talks about eight possible states of what future jobs will look like. And that's also a big concern of all our jobs in the So at one extreme, it talks about what's called the agile uh, technologies. That means people who know technology, who could even pick up new technology as they move along. And then at the other end is the people who are comfortable with their existing life. Uh, they call it the rural community. Rural actually. Meaning that if you are comfortable with your farmland, your farming, you are getting what you need, you don't uh, want to move into the city, then let that be perhaps just simple electrical supply, right? But don't be for robots to move around. Right? So there are two extreme men and maybe three six other places. So I guess the countries also need to explore where do they want to be in this whole world. Um, with no prejudice, maybe the less developed countries, the rural areas of South America or Africa, may not need a lot of digitalization. So this may not apply, except for the city. For the developed countries, right, um, I think the move into this space is something that they must seriously explore. The government need to move ahead with it. So, for example, look at China. China recently approved the licensing of the digital currency. Right? What does that mean, right? That's going to shake up the whole financial sector. The banks are going to get worried. Right? Um, honestly, Alibaba doesn't have a license to lend money. Or, you know, they are just a platform. You put money there, you spend there. It doesn't go to the bank anymore. So the bank cannot buy interest. So there's a disruption to the financial industry. Right. Um, and that's going to grow. Right. Grab is about. 
go by the grass. Right? And you can travel anywhere you want to go. The money will come for the cell phone. And the bag cannot let you turn that out. And he goes to grab. So what does grab put the money? You don't spend a single dollar. You don't say, I need to spend five ringgit, I'm putting five ringgit. You probably put 50 ringgit and spend five ringgit. So what happens to the 45? Get needed for financial investment or whatever. Right. So they are behaving like the bank. Right. So some regulations have to come in eventually. Some of this will be pushed by the private sector. Right. Because if you don't, the whole industry will be disrupted. Some will have to come from the government as, as present the needs there. Singapore today is still struggling with deciding to do or not to do. DPS is probably back this morning further again. They've done quite a bit of revolution uh, activity within the bank to adopt new technology. But the other bank is still shuffling the feet and figuring out what's going to happen next. But with China taking the step to approve digital currency, I think most of the other things will start to move. Right? They are a big player. Like they are not. China is a big player. Right? They supply to many things. Right? I mean, if we all stand up, I'm sure something made in China. Right? You can't do with it. So they are big players. <laughs> they go to the digital currency. The banks around the world are the decision. Right? Um, so, so it will happen, for instance, when, when the, the local politics and the site that they need to move into that space. So, you see, the, uh, Singapore struggling with that. Thailand is uh, trying to assess whether they can move into that area. They're very aggressive. Um, Indonesia is going to sort out some of their problems locally, for instance, Philippines. Malaysia has potential. Right? I, I've not heard anything yet, but in Malaysia has potential. Singapore knows that's an issue, we're struggling with it, but the DBA is a to do a lot more. Uh, if you look at the other countries, um, slowly and surely, uh, it's going to be the way it goes. Um, China, as you all know, is very cashless. They put 100 revenue in this wallet. If you find that you don't use the, the revenue note at all, you probably use you know, Alipay or Huawei. All the cash is payment. Right? Uh, you probably read all the news where our minister went to China and he wanted to pay, and the vendor says, Sorry, we you, you, you don't collect cash. Right? So the world is changing. China taking the lead in the space. Uh, I suspect in time to come, all the other countries that want to go in China all have to follow suit as well. So it's a question of time. Uh, I think many countries are struggling. To establish what does that mean? Uh, eventually, my guess is we may adopt um, the, the framework set up by China uh, because they're the big brother in the little commerce. Economy. So uh, we may have full support for the group. I hope that helps. Yeah. Any other questions? I have one, yes. one question. Uh, to extend the question earlier, sure. does, does the Singapore government impose any safety standard and regulation for the KDP cards or hmm. um, the question is, does the Singapore government uh, extend any safety standards for the use of the law? Now that is actually a very, very good question. Okay. Uh, this is also one of my frustration. I tell you what, um, I brought an exoskeleton from uh, Korea to Singapore and we've got hospitals and homes who want to pilot it already. Right? But it's taking two years for the uh, Health Science Authority to approve it, to medically certify it. So it's asking a lot of questions about security, uh, physical standards, tests, two years. Please. And I guess for those doing in the medical space, we know that for, I guess in Malaysia and MDC, right? medical authority are very happy. Drugs, like you take it, uh, or physical contact, they're very careful there. Right? So, technology do not wait. So, the, the, the papers that submitted the Singapore for certification, right, was based on version, I think, 2.0B. Now, and B is still uh, 2.0, is not approved. So, technology will be enhanced. enhance. So, as you know, in medical certification, when, when you have a new version, you have to submit it information. So the answer is yes, there are regulatory requirements. Uh, question how we meet all those requirements. Uh, and those requirements are all expanding. If you take a look at um, the US FDA website, my God, 
the number of pages you read also you get very scared. Well, really, you fulfill everything, and many countries are relying on that. The latest one that's very tricky is cybersecurity. How to ensure cybersecurity in the medical devices? So if I look at the report, I'm going to get the so how do I ensure that when the data is sent to the cloud and to the caregivers, somewhere no human has intercepted? Right? And use that information for wrongful use. So that is an issue, and, and medical authorities could be very concerned about that. So they have imposed that kind of In fact, my latest request from the authorities, how do I ensure that the exoskeleton that I use is cyber secure? So answer is yes. But this is all evolving. It's all evolving. Okay? Yes, okay. Uh, just a quick short question sure. on the uh, blockchain center <laughs> Singapore. The blockchain Singapore, uh, blockchain center Singapore by Singapore government, how's the support progress for America? Um, I think the blockchain community in Singapore are still very much at the general level. They have not gone down to the specific sector. Um, but there are a couple of conferences that are diving in there. Um, the agencies, the government agencies are, are taking a very conservative uh, view and not uh, showing any major support at this point in time because they still there. The one sector that uh, is getting a lot of attention is financial sector. So, in about three weeks' time, FinTech Singapore, uh, if you happen to be in Singapore, uh, it's the 11th, 14th of uh, November. Right? There's a lot of things happening there. Uh, the monetary authorities in the world is central bank uh, is, is taking a lead in that sector. Now on the healthcare side, um, I guess they're watching the counterpart in the financial sector. So not much support at this point in time. Uh, but once we, we settle the financial sector, then probably the model will, will roll out to the Well, uh, the robot seems to be very good for the elderly, but uh, how much it will it cost? What do you think it costs? I mean, cost in terms of buying the robot, I think not everybody actually can afford this kind of thing. Um, it is definitely not as a price of the Vancy robot. Uh, my guess is not in the 10% of the robot. So, uh, okay. so, like all, all applications, you buy the, the hardware, and then the software layer, so depending on how much application you lay on top, right? So you have a choice. The basic robot and the basic application uh, 15k uh, second. No. Okay. 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 But just like you mentioned, uh, uh, also mentioned about hospitals and the waiting time is very long. And I saw a video uh, by uh, Alibaba, robot and AI, yeah. in the hospital, where anybody who wants to visit any specialist or anything, <coughs> they just key whatever they, 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 their problem is, and then they will be directed to see which doctor and what form and those things. Are these available in the service station? Um, to save time, I have not heard of any that I mentioned right? I have not heard of any or any successful cases, but I know the obvious people experimenting with that. Right? Um, if it is in case of a shopping center wayfinding, right? so I told the shopping center that I want to look at food, fast food, western food, right? Those are my criteria. The search is okay. But in the medical field, a bit more careful. There were some specialists, uh, some medical attention. We always want to make sure you don't need to send somebody to the wrong place. Shopping center, I spoke to the wrong restaurant, and all the complaints, which is why I say, when you go to the wrong doctor, it gets very difficult. So that space, uh, not so much. Yeah. Okay. That's all right. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, right here. Uh, can you share a bit the uh, example of collaboration between uh, the, the private hospital and academia and the government? Uh, because Singapore, uh, because it's very close to computer systems, it's easier for the people. So maybe you can share a bit with some of the use cases of the collaborative projects that uh, there's no 
Any other questions? If not, I will be the next speaker is here. Yes. One final question. Final question. <laughs> Pro technology. The pro, pro technology is a, it's a tricky one. Uh, it's okay to fly out drones in Malaysia, we have a lot of space. <laughs> Singapore, our space is so limited, right? So, so we have read the papers, I think, three, four months ago. A uh, few flights could not land because a couple of people were playing their drones near the airport. Yeah, and it disrupted the system. So, so we have very, very strict criteria around flying drones. <coughs> so they, um, Indoors, no problem, but indoors, no fun. You go out there, right? But you go out there, there are very few restricted areas with the fine ones. So the adoption of those is limited to the area support. Very limited. Okay, I think that is my, my slide now. Back to the next speaker. Thank you so much.